Rafiki comes twice a week to Bash Street to take the tufts of Northport for Jim. During the rest of the week, Beaky is at Windsor Crescent, a posh grammar school on the other side of town. He looks down on us and never gets tired of telling us what a shower of stiffs we are. Last week, going to school with Smithy, I discussed ways and means for taking a rise out of Beaky. The trouble with the big lug, I said, is that he really thinks we're not as good as the winds a lot. Well, they play rugby, so we can't wallop them at soccer, Smithy pointed out, and the cricket team is too posh to play us. Somehow, we've got to get a crack at the toffs and lick them at something. In the meantime, let's concentrate on Beaky. Our gym is at the other side of the playground from the school. When we went over that morning, Beaky was nowhere to be found. Then, we spotted him, panting along Bash Street on his bike. Here's a chance, chaps! I rapped to the gang. By the time Beaky goes to the staff room and gets over here, we can do quite a bit of doctoring in the gym. We slipped inside and got to work. A few minutes later, Beaky appeared and told us to change. We got into our running shorts, well, those who had them, and nipped into the gym. Get down two mats, said Beaky. And bring out the basketball stands. We'll have a spot on mat work, then we'll finish up with a game of basketball. It was a program that suited the Japes well. As a matter of fact, Beaky nearly always does the same thing, and we'd a good idea what to doctor. We formed into a long line, and at the very end of the line came the gang. Gasbag Jones, Wilfred, Fatty Brown, Smithy, Danny Morgan, and me, Sid Pye. We had a good reason for waiting till the end. Run up, commanded Beaky, and do a forward roll on the mat. Rising sharply to your feet afterwards. The line started to run. One after another. The lads of 2C made their forward roll. 14 had gone over before my gang made their rolls. And if you watched closely, you'd have noticed that we rolled as close to the outside edge of the mat as possible. Then I noticed Tweety Wilson. The class sneak, starting to wriggle. More lads began to wriggle, till soon nearly the whole of 2C were wriggling about like snakes on a hot day. What's the meaning of this? Please sir, gasped Tweety, my back feels very itchy. Oh, so does mine came a chorus from the rest of the lads. Then, suddenly, Beaky himself began to fidget. He stood on one foot, then on the other. Then, he began to hop about like mad. Soon, he looked as if he was doing the Highland Fling. Carry on, boys! <coughs> He puffed and disappeared in the direction of the little staff room beside the gym door. When he went out, I laughed until I burst. 
The old itching powder routine had been used in every school since itching powder was invented. But it still strikes me as funny. We'd filled Beaky's gym shoes full of it. Then, since we had some left, we thought we'd jape the class. Knowing that all the toadies, including Tweety Wilson, would get the biggest dose of powder. They always rushed to the front, so we dusted the mat in the middle. We'd made a mug out of Beaky, but he had the last word. You're a crowd of numbskulls, he bellowed. The boys of Windsor Crescent could teach you manners, and they would whack you at sport too, you inferior ruffians. Can you fix a cricket match then? No said Beaky, decidedly. I wouldn't have anything to do with showing you up. Besides, the Windsor Crescent lads pick their company carefully. We were wild, but there was nothing we could do until after the bell rang and I had a brainstorm. We'll run in their inter-schools relay race on Saturday, I announced. Then we'll make Beaky eat his words. Well, how can we do that then? Said Smithy. We aren't invited, and if we try to gate crash, we'll be pitched out on our ears. We'll ambush the Cliff Hill College team. They're the posh mob who caught four Bash Street boys once and covered them all over with boot blacking, remember? We owe them one for that. With their togs and borrowed strips, we can sneak into the race. Well, we'll have to win, pointed out Gas Bag. We will. Today's Monday. We'll train hard every night. Saturday found us trained to a hair and waiting at the railway station for the visiting teams to arrive. First to come was the team from the very posh place, Cliff Hill College. Hello chaps, I said, going forward and trying to speak as posh as I could. This is a reception committee to take you to the Wins a Crescent Sports Ground. Oh, frightfully decent of you, said the tallest of the four. We weren't sure of the way, though we intended to follow the map you sent. With eight against four, the ambush was a sure thing. Passing along the street that Fatty lives, we suddenly grabbed them, two to each Cliff Hill boy, and hustled them into Fatty's shed. It was done so quickly that before they realised it, they were inside. And over your bags. Oh, there's nothing valuable in them. I'll be the judge of that, I growled. The poor spineless sap sanded over their bags without a murmur. Now that we'd stolen their uniforms and tied them all up, it was time for the sports itself. We hadn't long to wait, as soon the loudspeaker called. Runners in the under 15 schools relay! Runners in the under 15 school relay! We crept out of our hiding place and made it to the starting line. Then we saw a big snag. 
Beaky Parrot was acting as a starter. If he saw us, the game was up. Three of us, however, had moved to the changeover places. The distance was 440 yards, with each runner doing 110 yards. Bulgy Buchan was the first runner, and he kept well back till the last second. Then, he pretended to blow his nose as they went to their mark. <coughs> Beaky didn't notice him. Beaky's gun went off, and so did the sprinters. Coming to the first changeover, we felt there was nothing to this racing lark after all. I won't bore you with the names of the other schools. All we were interested in was beating Windsor Crescent, and I'm sure you feel the same way. At the changeover, Bulgy slapped the baton into Danny Morgan's hand, and Danny went like the wind. Third man for Windsor Crescent was a lanky bird. He gained on Foghorn, and amid a din like a cup final, he passed him. But as I grabbed the baton for the last lap, I just knew I had to do it. Out of the corner of my eyes, I could see Beaky Parrot waving his arms. And I knew the game was up. If we didn't win, we'd be the laughing stock of Northport. I went for the tape like a scalded cat. There were blokes on both sides of me. And there was me. And nobody. And I broke the tape. The chaps later told me I had a two yard lead at the end. Of course, Windsor College Masters tried to grab us, but we dived for the hedge and got out clean. We headed back to Fatty's shed to let the prisoners loose. There'll be trouble on Monday, warned Gasbag as we made our way back to Bash Street. But we didn't care. I had an idea that the head wouldn't wallop us quite so hard as usual. For the heading in the evening sports paper read, Bash Street School Pirates sail home to victory.